What's up, everybody, and welcome to Beyond the Neon Veil. I'm your host, Cousin Ryan, and today we have a great, great guest, someone from the Schmo Down who was a great friend of my cousin Moose. Uh, you're going to love this story. She has a couple of them for us tonight, so I'm even more excited. I'm going to go ahead and bring her in, the one and only Rachel. What's going on? It's, apologies up front. Um, Ryan has witnessed this, but during the pre-show, um, my light is very temperamental, so if it goes out <laughs> and you're not having a stroke, my light is just being dumb and cheap, apparently. Um, it's set so I love it. Honest, probably, so we'll see. You know, it's yeah, a just little little horror, a little romance. Decide, take the roll the dice. Hey, it's, hey, Vegas! There you go. Look at that. <laughs> Happy accidents. Gotta love them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so from back when before we started the show, you were telling me you've been to Vegas a few times. How many times have you been? like over here um i'd say probably a good like eight to twelve oh, wow okay it's one of those things that you don't really think of it's like how many beers have you had tonight don't worry about <laughs> it just have fun um no the first time i went to vegas uh it was two weeks after my 21st birthday and it was to get married but we're not going to talk about that one tonight maybe um but my we'll most memorable yeah well we'll see how to let's see how it goes um but my most memorable trip um it was a little uh the hangover ish um happened on a stopover I was on tour with beauty and the beast and we had a day off we were driving from like central california to say like Colorado or something. And we had a stopover and a night off in Las Vegas, which never fucking happens. Like <laughs> our nights off are in like Butte, Montana or like, I don't know, Fayetteville, South Carolina, which is a like, real downtown. fucking place. And it's terrifying. Um, yeah, we never really got to stop in like really cool spots. So like when we had a night out in Vegas, I was so excited and i was like i want to go see shows like i'm not a gambler in vegas i don't tend to like i learned very early on that um i only win when i gamble with other people's money like, i get that i went yeah. to go visit a yeah i went to go visit a roommate and she was a sous chef at uh uh what was it uh the fish house um okay. at mgm and so it's this really nice restaurant and you know, we're in our early 20s and it's not something you see two girls in their early 20s like who giggle and like swear a lot go to. Um, <laughs> and so we were waiting for waiting for our reservation. So we went into the casino early and I ran like we just put like 20 bucks in like the penny slots, which are my favorite. Um, prep, when you go to Vegas, find a penny slot that's closest to the bar and that way you get your drinks faster. Yes. So you can get drunk for free much much faster and yes. tip heavily tip the waitress heavily that brings your first drink anyway uh so we're drinking we're having fun my 20 dollars runs out so she puts 40 more in and on my next spin i turned it into 800 dollars. oh wow so she like she was like oh my god here's your 400 i'm like i'm not taking your money like let's just use let, like let's use it to have like really the best meal of our lives let's go let's splurge let's get some really expensive bottle of wine let's like have a great night and then whatever's left over you just like that's fine and it was amazing it was so good um but that taught me that i only win when i roll with other people's money which <laughs> is kind of it's it's not the best thing to know about yourself no. when you're of us um but so I so I tend to avoid gambling unless it's like again at the penny slots next to the bar waiting for some like you have a set time to leave. That's it. Like mm -hmm. 
don't fucking just sit there all night like throwing cash into a machine like don't do that um and so i went i so i didn't want to gamble and i wanted to go see a show because fucking live entertainment i have to go judge the merchandise have to go be entertained all the time um and so i ended up meeting up with uh, this girl that I had been on warp tour with, she happened to be in town uh, with her family. Uh, she's graduating. Uh, she was uh, celebrating graduating from college. <clears throat> and so like her parents were out, her best friend was out, they lived in Michigan. Um, and so I was like, hey, let, let's meet up for a drink. I haven't seen you in however many years. So she and her friend, her girlfriend, Tony and I met at a bar uh, in a casino and we're drinking and then her parents come and join us and these are like just like the cool parents like you all that like in high school like their house was the house that you could go and like like they would have a you would have a party at the house and they'd be like drinking or whatever and they'd be mm -hmm. upstairs like let us know if you need anything like right. those kind of people um <laughs> so that's like buying shots all of us and drinks like this man was like like you would have thought that he had just graduated from college you know like he was so happy and excited and just like this really cool dad and we're all having a good time and then they go hey we're gonna go see a show you want to come with us i'm like fuck yeah you know i'm like six shots three drinks in i'm like i have nothing planned tonight i was just gonna roll the dice at EKMS or GKTS. Um, so we end up getting, they're like, great, we have an extra ticket anyway, why don't you just join us? I'm like, okay, what are we seeing? There's this thing, I don't know if it's still in existence, I hope it is, because this show was so, it was so perfect for our group and for me specifically, and I just loved it so much. It was called Zombie Burlesque. Oh, I've seen it, I've seen it. It's yeah. amazing, yes. <laughs> So the it's whole premise of this show, it is first of all, the talent involved, yes. far off, like, oh my God. I literally have brought, did you see the, uh, cause I know that they change it as, mm -hmm. um, as dancers and actors come and go. But like, when I saw it, there was this one number that legitimately, st like it made me sob, like just weeping in my seat. Was this beautiful dance between these two zombies. Um, it was like ballet form and like, they start off by like in this couple and like, you know, just being two people and they meet and they're interacting and like they walk up to the front of the stage, both facing the, the, the audience. There's a light over their bodies and it just shows like this like pink glow start to radiate through them. It's supposed to represent love and they're falling in love yeah. and everything. And then they have this beautiful dance and they're in love and then they like start fighting and then they like go to break up and right before they break up. They both come back to the front of the stage and they're glaring at each other and the light just disappears from their bodies. And it is like, it is so powerful and so good. And I just sat there like weeping into my free jello shot that they handed out during the show because <laughs> of course they hand out jello shots during the show. Um, but I love that the whole premise was like the zombie apocalypse has happened. Mm -hmm we've now moved forward and we are now trying to find a way for humans and zombies to live together in peace and the way that they do that is to feed the prisoners to the zombies mm -hmm. so there's these songs and dances throughout the whole thing about like this new this like ringleader zombie like trying to like help this new zombie learn how to be a zombie and it got bit and you know but the song um you're not gay if you eat penis Okay. Literally yeah, had me know. cry, like it had me crying, laughing, falling out of my chair because it just has like these giant dildos on stage that he's like <laughs> dancing around with and like they're just throwing at each other and like taking bites out of. It was so fucking funny. Um, but yeah, that was so we did that, and then we went out to an, we went back to the bar that we were at, and then randomly, and this is I don't know if this is just Vegas for everybody. But this is just my life in general. I run into people that I know fucking everywhere. Like in the most random of spots. Like I met a guy that my dad went to high school with in a bar in Nebraska. Oh wow. My dad went to when dad went to high school here in California. Like, like weird shit happens. 
Um, and so like we're sitting at the bar and all of a sudden this guy, that both Brittany and I had been on warp tour with just goes walking by us. And we're like, what the fuck freeze? He comes and hangs out with us. There's another person. I think, I think there were like two more people from warp tour that night that joined us. Night gets a little funny and fuzzy after that, but I have a picture <laughs> of us in front of this, uh, in front of the, uh, of Chang's. Mm -hmm. on the strip and two we we had gotten two people on top of the horse like you know they have those giant yeah. horse statues out in front we somehow without getting like security on us or police we got two of our people up sitting on the horse and this great blurry picture of all of us just like cracked up and these, because I, I think, I think, I think it's because they couldn't get down. We were trying to figure that out. <laughs> we're like, just jump. They're like, it's like, I'm gonna break my leg. We're like, fucking yeah. slow days. We're just like, drunk, belligerent, yelling at each other, crying, laughing. Um, I think I got to bed that. Oh, and then we went to like some karaoke show at some lounge. Um, we ended up hanging out with drag queens until like 4 a.m. And I didn't get yes. back to my to my hotel until like six. We had bus call at seven. So I had just enough time to like shower three times because it was gross. We had like we had drinks spilled all over us and like food. We'd gone out like I had like a like a, a piece of like a what was it even? Oh, it was uh potato wedges. Like a potato wedge like stuck in my hair somehow. <laughs> I like get that out. Um and then I had I had just enough time to like change, like get out of the shower, change, pack all my shit, and like run down to the bus as they were like, mm, almost time. I'm like, yeah, but I fucking made it, and I'm gonna go to sleep now because I'm fucking tired. <laughs> I think I I think I ended up with like, I think I got I think I've gotten, I think I walked back to the hotel with a drink in my hand, or I got a drink once I got back to the hotel. Somehow I ended up with a drink in my hand and I don't know how. I know I, I know I had a shower beer because shower beers are important. Mm -hmm. Um, I had a shower beer and then I remember waiting, <laughs> waiting for the elevator to go down to the bus. And I've got my suitcase, got my backpack, I've got my sunglasses already on, and I've got a drink in my hand, and it is like 656 in the morning. And I just remember coming down and the doors opening and one of their, one of the, the hotels, like, uh, not butlers, what are they called? Like just one of like the, the bellhops was like standing there with like a, a thing, like waiting, like a, a, a suit rack ready to go upstairs. And he just looked at me and he goes, looks like you had fun. And I'm like, <laughs> jury's still out. Let me yeah. go to sleep first. And then tell you. And he goes, oh yeah, you had fun. And I'm like, you like high fived as I walked by, like. Cause that's just fucking Vegas. Like <laughs> I bet they see stuff like that all the time. Probably worse shape oh. than you are too. Oh, a hundred percent. Oh my God. So it's, so there's a lot to unpack here. Cause I have questions. And I have questions. <laughs> uh, the zombie burlesque for those watching it's at the miracle mile at planet Hollywood. Um, I have seen it as well. Uh, it was there up until recently. And it's funny because I told I was the best man at my friend's wedding two years ago. And I told the story of that because that's the first time I met his wife was we took them to that show and yes. they got trashed halfway through. They almost got called up on stage because they were that loud couple just like talking and they wanted to do a oh yeah you know, dating kind of dating game type thing. But mm -hmm. uh, that show was hilarious. It was fantastic to watch. It was so great. Uh, the big thing that I know some of the people who are watching this are going to want to know too, Warp Tour. What do you, because I'm a huge Warp Tour kid. I, I loved it. Uh, I was, I lived in Washington it's... during, during the, the glorious so of the gorge was my spot. So. Sorry, I'm just well, dying a little knowing what question is coming up. Uh, okay. So I, I have. Tour? I know, I know. What is Warp Tour? I'm so old and it makes me feel so sad. Warp Tour was the most glorious day you could spend every summer as a fan of punk rock music or literally just like any alternative music like yeah. i did you know that 
Eminem was yep, once Eminem on Warped Tour. Yep. Eminem performed. Uh, Ice T was on Warped Tour. Katy Perry got her start on Warped Tour. I was there mm-hmm. the summer. I worked that summer that she started off on a side stage. The MySpace stage. And then by the, say what? The MySpace. Yeah, she was on the MySpace stage yep. because that's how Kevin Lyman discovered it. So Kevin Lyman yeah. is, God bless him. I honestly don't know what the music industry would be like without Kevin Lyman. Um, mm-hmm. Kevin Lyman worked in festivals for so many years and then he wanted to create his own. And so he decided that he was going to create this, like talking about it, it just sounds fucking nuts. Right, crazy. Um, but it's it's insane. It's it's a festival of, in the 2000s, it got to be like about 120 bands, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, like there were six stages, each of them were playing. Uh, so there was six main stages in pairs. Um, so they would switch off. So there'd be two main stage, two B side, and then two C stages, and then like a smattering of other things going on throughout the the venue. Um, but they would switch back and forth. So like, um, if A stage was playing, B stage was setting up. And then as soon as A stopped, B would start, and then A would start up the next band. And it just leapfrogged like that. And they would be either right right next to each other or like across from each other. Um, right. So you'd have to like run back and forth or run side to side, pick who you wanted, stand in the middle, whatever. Um, and it was from like a, the gates were at 11 and it went until about nine o'clock every night. And then that was when the rest of the crew got to play. Cause once everything was down, we had a barbecue every night and there were sponsors and there was amazing nonprofits on there. Um, mm-hmm. But I, I actually worked for one of them uh, for a few summers um, and a bunch of my favorite people on there and it's literally just like a traveling circus at one point we had luchadors on tour with us Mm -hmm. uh there was a fruit show that one year uh you know like the tattooed lady uh swallowing swords like fire breathing like it was fucking amazing um and it would travel around city to city and it went on for like 24 25 years i think and it was the longest ongoing tour in north american history uh, it toured also, it did small runs in the UK and in Australia. Um, it was literally like the best time ever. Um, and it's, it's very, quint- it, like, it's very, it's very central in what makes me who I am today. Um, because I worked for like nine summers on it and it's an incredible thing. Crossing my fingers, they bring it back eventually. Um, I think it would be phenomenal. Like all of your favorite bands, like from the alternative and now like, you know, the emo stage that everybody's seen as emo. And I'm like, taking it back Sunday. Mm, maybe it's uh, it's yes. pop punk. It's a little right. emo, but like, whatever. But like, taking back Sunday was out there. Paramore got her start there. So um, it's funny. I actually met Haley Williams on that warp tour before she made it like huge because she was just walking. Oh, yeah. She's tiny. She's so small. She's so She's small. Me. Yeah. She's so tiny. She at one point, their popularity got so big. I was talking to her. Um, I, I, yeah, she would, and people would like just walk around the the mm-hmm. the environment that we had, yeah. just like hanging out, signing autographs, taking photos, like going and seeing her bands. Like everybody, like it turned into a giant family. I remember one year, uh, he, I think it was that year, um, he, uh, Misery Business had just come out, mm-hmm. and they were just starting to like get. They started becoming Paramore and uh, we're hanging out together and uh, we're just talking and this girl, like this crowd starts to gather around us and she just gets this look of like terror, like get me the fuck out of here. How do I leave? But she like, she like comes up to like here on me and she's like about the size of like my calf. She's very tiny. And so at one point I was just like, hop on, hop on. And so I like threw her (laughs) on my back and like ran through the crowd, like Yoda and Luke, like, it was really funny. She was like, yeah. She was so nice. Uh, she was walking around the gorge, just her and her band. And like, no one really knew who they were at the time. Like they, they knew a Paramore, you know, but they couldn't recognize her. And I just picked her out of the crowd and I was like, I'm going to go say hi. And, I, and she was so nice. So freaking nice. She's the oh, I, the, I, 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 I told I, her. Yeah, I, I told her that uh, I was like, I was like, you're so sweet. You're just a little fey, aren't you? And she's like, I'm sorry, what? I think she thought I called her gay. And I'm like, fey, like a fairy. You're like, you're, you're fey. You're this slight, very like, spite. You're just adorable and like fiery and sassy and so lovely. And she's just the best. 
Well, and it's it, what's but, awesome was I went to when we were young this past year, so I got to see her see them perform again. Um, I know, right? And it was it it nostalgic as all hell. Reminds me of Warp Tour. It wasn't Warp Tour, but it reminded me of it. And it's it's it was, crazy. It was old person Warp Tour. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it was. I that comment came up a lot with people that I was standing around because we're all you know in our you know mid thirties, late thirties, and. We all felt it, but we hung it out. We all stuck it out until the very end. So <laughs> there's something special about the people I think uh, that are old enough to have been at Warp Tour because they're like doing Warp Tour, like working at Warp Tour every day, day in day out. It takes so much out of you. Like you are up and out of the bus by like 7:30 to get breakfast because then they start doing the truck dump at like eight and then you have to grab all your stuff and go find a spot to set up and set up and by the time you're done the doors are opening that you're dealing with people all day and then it's five o'clock in in the area that, that i was working in and then you cut you shut down at, at five and then by the time all your stuff is back on the truck it's seven and then you have to go get food before the dinner shuts down and then you have to go stand in line for a shower which was always the fucking worst and then by the time you're clean it's like maybe eight o'clock you get back to the bus and you drop all your shit off uh and then you might be able to catch one last set on the main stage uh for whoever's closing out the day and then you go to the barbecue at night and you get drunk because you're still fucking so wired that you have to get so drunk that you pass out in your bunk and then you do that and then you wake up the next morning and you do it all fucking over again so it's like staying high like it's like keeping your anxiety and your energy at a 10 constantly for like two and a half months and it is exhausting. And like every day is the best and worst day of your life. Um, uh, it's it's incredible. And if you can live through it, like you have memories that will last you a fucking lifetime. But as you get older, <laughs> tapping into that, yeah, oh, incredibly yeah. Uh, painful. So when when we were young, but, right? Because yeah. like as the age of we were when we were young, we stayed the entire time. We got there before it opened. We stayed the entire time. Absolutely. And leaving that place across from uh, the Sahara, trying to find a spot to go grab our Uber or just to get away home. Everyone who's like, you can tell they're bleeding in their shoes. You know, they're not, they're in their thirties. They're not used to partying and drinking like that and crowd surfing. Yep. It, it was different from the times of when we were young, when going to see Warp Tour, they were like, oh yeah, no, we're fine. You know, like, we can keep going. I have an hour and a half okay. drive, but it's fine. I'll, I'll be okay. It, it's Let way different. put it this way. In 2005 was the year that I got to audition for Warped Tour. I had met Kevin at, um, the, I had been working for this nonprofit called Music Saves Lives, and okay. we were hosting a Warped Tour kickoff party at the Viper Room in LA, which is incredibly infamous. Like, it is, it mm -hmm. is, if you go to LA and you don't go to a show there, like, are you really a music fan? Um, yeah. But we were hosting this kickoff party, and I was upstairs on a break, uh, grabbing a drink, and this amazing all-female Japanese punk band was on, and they fucking blew everybody's faces off. They were so fun. There were these cute little Japanese girls, like in like schoolgirl outfits, but like rocking out so hard. You're like, this girl has a fucking shiv on her. I just like. <laughs> um, and they ended, and I realized I was standing next to Kevin Lyman, and so I broached the idea. Um, to put a massage like I know that they a tour massage therapist her name is Tess she's amazing she now tours with bad religion like she is their oh, wow. massage therapist like she is on like she is theirs but at the time she was on warp tour and she would work backstage and she did like shiatsu and like deep tissue and like really really like specific very like it's it, it's a lot more deep it's a lot mm. It's hard to explain without it sounding like a fucking horrors thing. Um, but but uh, so she was, she would be backstage, like taking care of people, like the crew that like were dying and hurting or whatever. Um, and I broached the idea to uh, to Kevin to have a massage there, like a massage therapist in reverse daycare for the parents who did not want to be there, whose younger children wanted to be there, and they had a a tent just for them, showing movies, and it was air conditioned and. I think if they were under a certain age, like the parent got in for free um, and he really liked the idea. So the, the summer of 2005 was my audition. He's like, come out for the California dates. We'll see if we can put you, like, we'll see how it goes. If it goes well, we can talk about like putting you on a bus and like being for the rest of the summer. 
So that year there was five dates in California in the same like week. My best friend and I road tripped and followed. So we were working, she was a, a photographer. So I was able to like be like, hey, my best friend, we're taking her car. She, we're sharing driving. Like, is it okay if she gets a photo pass for the shows? So she would be off photographing bands. I would be working on, and then at the end of the day, instead of getting drunk at barbecue and then just sleeping it off in the bus and just waking up wherever we're supposed to be, we had to drive every night so oh, wow. we were like getting maybe like two hours of sleep a night, which was very fucking dangerous. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like to the, it was to the point one time, I think we were trying, I think I was driving and I had like the star Wars thing about like, you know how like R D two projects the image of Leia and it's like, help me Obi-Wan. You're my only hope. But like, it's constant. Mm -hmm. Like that's, I was seeing people in the road as I'm going like 85 on highway five. And there was just like, a hologram of like that I was hallucinating that was in the road like talking to me I was like I think we need to pull over and get some sleep like this is this I'm gonna mm -hmm. we're gonna crash we're gonna die we were like, subsisting off of like nutrient bars and like monster it was bad like literally yeah. only things that you could do in your early 20s yeah. <laughs> yes. now, I was so sad with uh when we were while we were young best because uh I had tickets to the Friday that got canceled yeah the wind yeah that that, wind. that really fucking sucked well I had tickets and then like some work thing happened and I ended up getting <laughs> Longer short, I got abandoned in Reno by my boss and had to stay the night in a super sketchy hotel like the Thursday night before the Friday that was supposed to be mm -hmm. in Vegas, but I ended up like selling my ticket for like 150 bucks. And then because it was canceled, uh, Dubhub refunded the guy who I had bought the ticket from. And then while we, we were young, refunded the full price of my ticket. So instead of me getting 150, I got like the 350 that I had originally yep. spent on it. And I was like, yes! Yes. And then I was very sad watching Twitter for this two two weekends because everybody was there and like all, like everyone, like all of my warp tour family were there. Like everybody was hanging out and I was just like sitting home with such FOMO, just like this fucking sucks. I wanna be in Vegas, like <laughs> this is stupid. I wanna be in San Jose. It blows. You know, and even though they canceled that show, the fact that a lot of those bands came together and put on shows that that oh. saturday night and you did what they could it was amazing vegas was I mean, we were on the strip port and it was it was a trip it was a fucking trip seeing all those bands walking around yeah. too yeah well i mean they are of the era where everything was diy like mm -hmm. everything you had it like there was no there was no youtube really to like post music videos or interviews there was like hardly any podcast like nobody knew like the extent of the internet is my space. Right. Like, if you, like, the it, it was so hard for bands to get noticed and to build a fan base. And, like, it took years for bands from even just, like, their first local show to, like, opening for a band on tour. It took years to build the kind of following and the, the kind of reputation in order to be, like, noticed by a record label or a touring band that you wanted to open for. And so like, um, I feel like that Friday night kind of brought back all that like DIY, like, well, the show must go on. Like mm -hmm. if we blew the fuse, like let's go steal your neighbor's electricity, like right. shit like that, you know, like, like the, sh like the party doesn't stop just because a little wind came and like was blowing shit around. Like, no, they're punk rockers. They're going to make sure that shit happens. Yeah, they're like, they're you're here for a show. Thing. Yeah. Go to the show. Like there was. We uh yes. I know like on a a couple of my guests before have talked about this place called O'Shea's on uh at the Link Promenade. And uh that's funny. I think you have a story about that place, hopefully. Um we wow. ran into the we ran into a few bands. I know my buddies were excited because state champs were there, they got pictures with all of them. Um, other bands were playing at the Brooklyn Bowl and, you know, it was just, it was a really cool vibe, even though that show got canceled and we still got to see them, some of them. So it was great. It was really great. Yeah. I, 
I remember we were, uh, I think it was still on Beauty and the Beast at that point. I spent five years with Beauty, so a lot of, sh- a lot of shit went down on the, in those five years. Um, <laughs> but we were in Vegas for a week, and I got to take a night off. Like, my bosses were very good about, like, if we're in a city for, you know, six, eight shows over six days, like, we both work the first day, we both work the last, or the, the last loadout, um, but we get to, like, each take a full day off and like not worry about it during the week because our our schedule was so fucking stressful that like when we got the chance we made sure that we each were given the opportunity to like take a step back and like go be a real person somewhere else and i remember one time we were in vegas and uh bayside was playing there and i i love me my bayside oh yeah no i i saw yeah, no, I, I love Bayside. I was actually, the summer that Jack met his wife, Jess, mm-hmm. Jess was on my bus. And so I got to see, like, that love blossom, which was also uh, the same movie. year. Oh, wait, yeah, which was also the same year that a different Jess, there were a lot of Jessicas on Warped Tour, uh, <laughs> another <laughs> Jess, uh, Jess Wesley, met her husband, who, oh my God, why is his name? Is right out of my mind, uh, but she's now been married to. Uh, he's in Mayday Parade. Oh wow! Uh, and they met on that tour, uh, and they've been married for like ten years. They have this cute little pug named Poe, um, but like, like that shit actually happens in real life, and so you get to see all these wonderful things. And so um, I went to go see them. I hadn't seen them in like four or five years. I just showed up, and my favorite thing when I go to concerts, my favorite thing is to surprise people be greeted with the reaction of what the fuck are you doing here? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, yay, you missed hey. me. Um, yeah. And I just, the, sh- the, sh- I just remember that show being like, I mean, Bayside never disappoints. No. Um, never. but I remember, I remember Jack and I, Jack and Chris and I sitting at the bar after the show and just like, <laughs> reminiscing about all the shit that like had happened on the warp tour the summers that we were out together and then talking about what's happening now and i was asking i think jack and jess were just like just trying to start to have a baby or something like that or somebody had just had a baby um and we're just sitting there like it was just the funniest thing because like these fans would just keep coming up and being like i'm sorry um can i just get a photo real quick and like I'd be like, yeah, for sure. And like, take their phone and like, take the photos for them, whatever. And then they'd like leave. And like, it was just the sweetest little moment, just like hanging out with friends at a bar that you just like got to see them rock out. Not gonna lie. Awesome. I'm, I'm a little jealous of that. And I know a few of my viewers will be too, because my buddies are very obsessed with Bayside as much as I am. Um, I've got to meet each of the guys individually at different shows, some in Seattle, some here in Vegas. They're all super cool. Uh, really fun to have a drink with. So that's awesome. That's yeah. I, yeah. I randomly, I randomly ran into Nick uh, in LA one year. Uh, I was there with, uh, I think I was still on beauty at that time, but uh, I used to write the 13th tattoos, which used to be a huge, huge, huge thing. Um, and so you'd go in and like put, you know, 20 bucks cash. It was $13 tattoos, a lucky $7 tip. You get to pick right. off your flash, whatever. Um, but at that time it was so popular that you had to wait fucking hours in line to get your tattoo. So a friend of mine was, uh, the manager of one of the tattoo places, uh, in Hollywood. And so I called her up and I'm like, Hey, I'm getting out of the show at like 1130. Like, can I come by? Like immediately afterwards, she just like slit me and she's like, absolutely. We'll take care of you. No big deal. So I get there. And like, I'm filling out my paperwork, I'm giving them my ID, and then I hear this voice behind me, what the fuck are you doing here? And it's Nick, apparently he lived like above the tattoo parlor, (laughs) and like just came down randomly to like hang out with his friends or something, and then I'm just magically there. So it was just like this beautiful little like, oh, I missed you, buddy. Like that's so cool like real world friend running. Uh, And it, I like, I still, it still makes me smile to this day. But they are generally, ge- genuinely the best. They They're are the sweetest. They they have been super nice every time I've interacted with them, um, at the bars or if I just see them walking around because they're the same type. They'll go out into the crowd and watch whoever's yeah. opening for them, 
And, you yeah. know, sometimes I have to chat with them and they're just super cool about it. They're so super sweet. Cool. I, I do miss them. And plus their music is fucking amazing. Like Devotion yeah. and, uh, oh my God. Devotion is Fire. Devotion is Fire. Still legit. One of my favorite songs of all time. Same. Like that song will come on and I'm like, I'm going to fuck shit up right now. Yep. Like, yeah. Like my steering always, wheel is about to get a beating. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always right there in the front or in the pit when they're playing because it's always just an awesome environment and the whole the crowd's always normally cool during their shows too. So it's just a great vibe. Yeah, great for my vibe. stepfather uh, lost his mind. He was a huge fan of theirs too, and I took him to uh, see them in San Francisco at Slim's. R.I.P. I love that place. Um, and like I brought my massage chair, or whatever, like with me, because the boys like you, you, you're if you're touring on the road, your body is falling apart. That's just the general gist of things. So I always like used to bring it in my car and be like, "Hey, do you guys want me to go grab my my chair?" And it's always a resounding yes. But like their dressing room was like this big, mm -hmm. and there's four of them. Plus, I can't remember who was TMing them at the time. And then me, and then the chair, and then my brother, who is like this giant rugby player. Uh, <laughs> we're all like in this tiny little room. And Chris is like, man, make me feel better. Uh, and it was just like seven just crammed in this tiny little room, like passing Heineken's back and forth. Uh, and I just, he was, he was so happy. Like he, he not stopped talking about it for like, six months after it happened he's like i can't believe i got to meet them they're so nice i'm like yeah, yeah, yeah. Be, be cool be cool, be cool. Let's chill about it uh, i think my i've seen them quite a few times here in in vegas like my favorite spot for them is the brooklyn bowl is probably my favorite venue yeah. that i'm gonna go watch them at and it's just a great venue for concerts in general so for all of you by watching if you in vegas and there's a band to go see go to brooklyn bowl that is the spot i mean go. i mean even if there's not a band to go see just go to the brooklyn bowl like True. it's a bowling alley like just yeah. fucking go like their their jukebox is amazing yeah, um just go just go put a few bucks in there like, i don't know let it rip um i do love brooklyn bowl uh and they have punk rock bowling out there every year yep. which yes, is they do. awesome I'm so glad they restarted that again like i mm -hmm. I, I, I i i feel like i've been but i have never been to brooklyn or to a punk rock bowling because it always happens while i'm on tour and it's one of those things where I'm like, God damn it. And I stopped touring and then COVID happened. And I'm like, you just want to go have fun with my friends. Right. I Yeah. And Vegas has a, quite a few like unknown venue spots to go see too. Not even just on the strip, but off Fremont. There's the, the it's called Backstage. Um, that's a cool spot. Oh, the band. Yeah. Band. Yeah. So yeah, there's a lot of cool things. Yeah. I, I, there's so many amazing like niche things to do in vegas mm -hmm. like there's a mob museum yep. have you been there yet yes it's phenomenal i, I literally it. walked in i'm like my people uh i love it. i need i want to go I, again i, I want to go to the bar there's that the bar the speakeasy that's there that's amazing yes. i didn't get a chance to go do that but i want to go do that really bad i did too but then i went to go do it um and, and also, this is just so fucking Vegas. There was a prom being held there. Uh, like, what an awesome place to have your prom at the Mob Museum. Cooler than mine was. Shit. I I mean, my, my <laughs> prom was really fucking cool, too. But it wasn't, like, Mob Museum amazing. It was very, like, early 2000s, like, middle class, suburban, white kids. Well, I, yeah, I grew up in a little small town in central Washington, so it was a little podunk kind of prom mm. for us. So, you know, hearing stuff like that and what my parents' prom was in South California, and I'm like, I'm jealous. I want shit like that. I'd love the Mob Museum to be my prom spot. You right? Or like, or like how like every high school in Anaheim has their grad night at Disneyland? <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> you spoiled <laughs> sons of bitches. Ugh. You, were my, would... you know where my grad night was? At the fucking high school, they turned they turned our dance studio into a casino where you got like, oh, yep. so it was so bad. It Ours was, was at so our YMCA. Bad. So yeah, I feel you one hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, it was it was one of those where like the parents tried really hard, and we were just like, it's it's just sad. We we just kind of occupied ourselves for a few hours until it was time for them to let us go. 
Well, this last but year, then actually, it was kind of awesome because we had. Uh, did you guys uh, have a radio station that used to do like kickoff to summer festivals? Yes. Yeah. So we did too. So our rock station up here for the longest time was sister stations with K Rock down in LA. So K Rock does Weenie Roast in LA. Mm -hmm. And yeah. the station up here would do BFD. It was a big fucking day. Um, and it it just perfectly timed the year that I graduated high school so that we had grad night and then the next day was BFD. So we stayed up all fucking night, gacked out on sugar, running around, wrestling with our friends. And then as soon as they let everybody out, everybody ran home to shower and change and then like rushed up to shoreline because gates opened at like 10 o'clock in the morning. And then we were just like pounding coffees all day, water trying to like stay hydrated. <laughs> and it was, it was fucking magical. I think I passed out like three times during, uh, cause like you have to keep your energy up in order to stay awake. Mm -hmm. And, uh, the stage that I was at had like, fucking all american rejects and they used and then it was oh it was was it no it wasn't thrice maybe it was thrice anyway there was a band that was playing some very slow music and i was in the front row so i had like my ribs pressed up against the barricade and i had people pressing from behind me so my air was limited and my my adrenaline was sinking and I hadn't had water in like six hours at that point. And so I just kept like leaning over the barricade and it just looked <laughs> like I was sleeping, but I was actually like micro passing out. Like that's, looking back, I'm like, that's dangerous. That's like super dangerous, I yeah. should have, I should have been taken to first aid and like given an IV and like checked on and like maybe a cookie or something, you know, just like get that blood sugar back up. But no, I didn't want to leave my spot because it was perfect and it was right in the front. Actually, where are my photo albums? I used to have them right here. Um, mm -hmm. I had some great. I used to smuggle in. Was before camera phones and everything, so I smuggled in like Insta cameras, mm -hmm. like the disposable cameras. Oh, we like, spin would, up inside, yeah. Yeah. The, yep. Um, but I would sneak in like five of them uh because i was blessed in the chesticle reason region uh so i would actually like touch you they just have to like use the back of their hands and so i would sneak them in like i would just get like the most giant bra i could and just like shove it in between <laughs> my bra and the, and the and the other bra and just like pat it out and just look like a literal just like jessica rabbit just like i could rest a to like a four top of them after that it was amazing um but I got some really good shots and like I like I my photo albums are amazing back now. Like I love having those things to like thumb through and be like, hey, remember this show? Remember this? Remember when Andrew McMahon had like curly, wavy, crazy hair before they went all corporate? Like, mm -hmm. no pun intended. Um <laughs> but like Yes, I love that that, show. Thank you. That was a good one. That was a nice pull right there. I liked that. Something corporate. For those who don't understand, Andrew McMahon is the lead singer of a band called Something Corporate, and they are not corporate. Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but and Andrew's another one of those that I've seen so many, so many times. They were they were on the cruise, one of the cruises I worked last summer. Um, and he like made a beeline. He saw me like through a crowd and like ran or was like, Oh my god, I can't believe it's you. Like gave me a hug and like I love that boy. He's so small. So when you come to Vegas again, we're gonna have to hang out because if you see someone famous, I want to be right there next to you. I mean it'll it'll happen for sure. Um <laughs> what's what's what there's some like super fucking sketchy dive bar in Vegas. I think it's called like the double down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Have you ever been there? No, I know what it, I know where it is, but I've never been there. It's so creepy. <laughs> like you walk in, you're like, I'm gonna get hepatitis. Yeah. Um, but it's like oh, yeah. everything you want a Vegas dive bar to be. Like the floors are sticky. There's like a blinky light somewhere. There's just graffiti and stickers everywhere. I think, yeah, the I know poor, exactly. super heavy uh, <laughs> and cheap. Um, yes. yes, I think the only beer. 
I think the only beer they sell is like PBR, which after one of the summers that PBR was a uh, a backline sponsor for the Warp Tour, like it took me like six years after that summer to be able to drink PBR or like smell it and not like vomit. Um, so there's, a, there's another one that's kind of hidden. Uh, it's called the Stage Door, and it's a tiny oh. little dive bar. Yeah, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's right across from Bally's. It's amazing, too. I love it. It's the same idea. It's sticky, stickers. Uh, yep. They sell hot dogs all, when they're rotating. <laughs> yep. For, for, first of all, any bar, no matter where you are in the country, if you come across a bar that's called the Stage Door, just fucking go. It'll be the most amazingly fantastic, blurry night of your life. Um <laughs> It's it's amazing. It's like it's like going to uh it's like going to Milwaukee and not going to the Sky Bar. Like you just you just kind of have to. You have to do it. Yeah, it's it, Vegas has so many cool things. Like I wish I wish that there was just like a way just to go. Like it's like everybody who goes to Vegas with a group of people, like there's always just be like fraction like factions of people that like split mm -hmm. off like. One group wants to go gambling. One group wants to go see a show. One group wants to just sit and drink. One person will adapt vampire hours, which is me. And if the sun is out, I am not out. Um, <laughs> to get yeah, no, I get that. I, get that. Uh, I mean, unless, unless I'm at my favorite, favorite hotel on the strip, and that is the Cosmopolitan. Really? Oh, my God. Have you been in those rooms? No. No, I have not. Actually. Those are legitimately the sexiest hotel room I've ever been. So the building started off as uh, supposed to be in like condos. Like mm -hmm. the person who bought it and like uh, started to, uh, but the purpose was to be, the original purpose was to be condos. So all of the hotel rooms have this like amazing layout. So you walk in, it's like a, uh, a living room area. And then like you walk towards the window and there's just like a shit ton of closet space because again, it was supposed to be condos. And then you come into the living room or you come into the, the bedroom and the bathroom, like there's like a way to see into the shower from the bed. Cause it's like a half wall and it's got like a, oh, right, yeah. you know, just like a window right there. And then there's like, this like you have to like this step in uh like a uh, jacuzzi tub that also is accessible from the bedroom um and then there's like this massive shower where they're smart it's vague you know people are just going to be in there hooking up so the <laughs> the temperature gauge and the water control isn't under where the water is it's like on the other wall so you're not like having that jam into your lower back is something else is jamming into you. Um, you know? <laughs> and, yep, then no. got, <laughs> and then they've got these like amazing balconies with like these shea lounges and like really comfortable, like it is a sexy ass place. Like it's so, it's so good. We stayed there, uh, got to stay there two nights when I was on tour with Jurassic Five and it has, oh mother, I almost did it. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Hold the light. I'll get back to that too, but I'm sorry. Did you say Jurassic Five? Yeah, that's amazing. That's another band not a lot of people know about. No, I. I mean, I didn't. Hold on, this is being stupid now. To be fair, I didn't really know who they were either because I was, um, you know, they were big in like the '90s. They're they're this old school hip group. They're phenomenal, and like Charlie Tuna, I love him so much. He's so big. He's so big. Really? Like every morning I went off the bus and he would be outside the, the bus, like smoking a blunt and my head would come up to here on him. And I'm tall. I'm almost six feet and my head would come like mid sternum to here. <laughs> and he would just, every morning I would get off the bus, he would just wrap me in a hug and I'd make an oak and he would laugh and his whole chest would vibrate. And it was like the best way to start the morning. I'm just like, I love you so, you just the sweetest. Um, we got so merch fact. on the, uh, say what? Okay, fun fact. So there is, because uh, I've been coming to Vegas since I was a kid. I've lived here for the last five years. Um, so where the Cosmopolitan is, there's another building that the Cosmo enveloped. And right. it's called it's called the Jockey Club. 
And that's yes. where we used to stay as kids. So before they built the Cosmo, we used to stay in the jockey club and we could see from that spot all the way down to Excalibur with nothing in between. So wow. for those who are visiting now, yeah, that in the jockey club's still there. You can't see anything anymore because it buds up against the Cosmo. But uh, I remember when they built that. I remember when they built the Cosmo up and over that. So that's hilarious. And yeah. I haven't stayed there, but I'm in there all the time. It's a it's a great casino. Like that's where they also had what was it? Uh, there was something, some show about a rabbit, it's like White Rabbit Run Rabbit or something like that. Um, but yeah, we pulled in. Uh, we were supposed to be performing at uh, the Cosmo has a stage on their rooftop like pool area, mm -hmm. and they would cover up the pool and like host concerts up there. So we were booked for to in order to perform. So we. We checked in the night before <laughs> and uh, our our monitors guy, uh, who is now like a very dear friend of mine. This was this was a shit show for him that year. Like, you know how like in your 20s, like there's that one year that you're like, I was dumpster fire. Like that mm -hmm. was not a good look. Nothing went right. That was his year. Wow. Uh, that that tour was just he he was going through some things and so he and i and one of our other sound guys i think bubbles was sound um the three of us went out to hogs and heifers <laughs> okay explain hogs and heifers to people because i know a fact not a lot of people have gone there hogs and heifers is a legit <laughs> biker bar is cash only that you cannot wear like gang colors to like legit fight break out mm -hmm. where people die like it is not just like a typical like who are the bar like you have to like be able to throw a punch and take a punch in order to like get in through the door um <laughs> yes. so we ended up at hot heifers for like eight hours um, and then we ended up, we ended up having to pour my friend into a taxi, got back to the Cosmo, um, and then he, his legs stopped working, um, so he couldn't stand up anymore, so we put him on one of those, like, luggage trolleys, <laughs> and, like, rolled up to his room, and, like, legitimately carried him into his room and, like, put him in bed, set his alarm whole nine because you got to look out for your family tour mm -hmm. um and the next morning we were supposed to check out and do the show that night and then hop in the bus and keep keep going but screwed up our rooms the day before so they weren't ready for us so our tm threw a fit like oh my god he was so sad so they comped us the second night nice so we got to stay in vegas for two nights for free at the Cosmo. And I'm like, this is the life I want. I want to just live at the Cosmo and have my rooms comped. And like, I had gone upstairs like to, to set up the merch before the show, I got it all set up. And then like, I had like four hours until the show started. So I went down to my room and like changed into my bathing suit. And they've got these like sunny pools where it's mm -hmm. like maybe six to 10 inches deep of water. And they have like the lounge chairs in the water. So you're keeping cool with the water and then like you can have a shade brought over for you and you're just like living the best life. So I literally was just like sun tanning for like two and a half hours, the hours before the show started, <laughs> ran back down to like shower and change and came back up. I'm like, this is, this is my favorite day on tour. Like amazing. hands down. Like, ever. Um, that was pretty amazing. <laughs> Has that been your favorite I place did it so far? In Vegas, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, like that is, that's one of those, where I, every time I tell somebody that like, who's going to Vegas for like an anniversary or like a birthday or something, I'm like, dude, you're going with your significant other, stay at the Cosmo, you will get laid a hundred percent. Like you can't, <laughs> like you can't, it was like the one time, one of the few times in my life that I was like legitimately angry about like not having a significant other or like even just like a bang buddy and just being like, right. This room is going to waste. I feel like I'm disrespecting it by not having sex in it. Like it felt right. like really weird. Um, no, it's it was 100%. If your room's that nice, you kind of almost have to. 
you know it's you just right you owe it to the room exactly. like exactly you have so to yeah i did i did help a bartender invent a drink at new york new york one year Ooh. uh that year i was on tour with that was oh that was the that was the dj tour i went out with so i was out crystal castles and rusco and destructo um i know these sound like uh like fighting robots or kaiju or something but they're bands i promise uh yep. you're, you're blowing um, my mind were, right now with all these bands it was it, it was the only dm i've ever worked on and it was fun and i don't think i'll ever do it again it's just it it was a lot but it was only like two and a half three weeks and it's perfect um but we had a we had a day room stop in vegas so they would do day rooms so that we could all shower we were driving from i think like northern california to colorado and we had like an eight hour stopover in vegas um so they got like two or three rooms for people to like go up and shower in it, take a nap if you were so inclined like whatever but they were like general use rooms mm -hmm. um so there was like me and one other girl on the tour aside from the girl in crystal castles they got their own shit but crew wise there was performers crystal castles had their own bus and then destructo and rusco were on crew bus and there was like maybe five of us there was like two sound guys a lighting guy uh christina was v was was video and then me um and so we pull up and christina and i get our get the keys first because we're gonna go up or shower we're gonna go eat like whatever and i ended up sitting at this bar that's literally like so for anybody who's never been to a casino there is more than one way out of the casino aside from the front doors yeah. and when you're on a tour the bus will park usually on on like a side street that's still like casino property and then it'll be like right next to an access door that you literally cannot tell exists from the inside unless you know where it is um so in the morning we get our stuff we go in through the into into the casino shower bring my stuff back down and then i go to the bar to get a drink i was supposed to meet up with a friend i think and like they ended up not being able to meet so i'm like talking to the bartender we're having these drinks and i'm you know just drink talking drink talking drink talking so i'm i can't remember how it started off but we invented this drink the blue balls and it's so delicious and so fucking sneaky it is so evil you take a pint glass and you put one and a half to two ounces of blueberry vodka at the bottom of the glass then you pour the rest of the pint of blue moon blue moon beer on top of it and it mixes while you're pouring it interesting and then you just sip and then you just sip on it and you, you just keep ordering them and you just keep fucking sipping and you completely forget that there's a shit ton of alcohol in that cup that you were just lackadaisically throwing into your body. So by the time <laughs> I went to stand up to go get food, I had already had like four of them, I think. And then I simply sat back down because my legs were about to give out because it's like... <laughs> It's like getting bitch slapped by a concrete hand in a velvet glove. It's evil. It's fucking evil, but so fucking good. It's so delicious. Do you remember I have which friends bar? Who are like, I can't. The name of it, no. It was like. <sighs> okay, so if you're walking in through the front, mm -hmm. it's off to the right. Okay. It's kind of like a, um, it's kind of like a, uh, like an Irish dive bar. I mean, it's, it's New York, New York. So like everything's kind of like that. Um, but it has like this, it had like, it had like a, like on the walkway and then there was the wall and then like a hole in the wall so that like you could see into the bar. Then there was just bar seating right there. And that's yeah, where okay. I sat. Okay. Was on like, and, and like the door to the outside was like maybe 10 yards away. So like everybody who's like coming to do their shower, just like they 
come in, they see me sitting there, they shower, they watch a football game, whatever, they get shit, they leave, I'm still sitting at the bar. <laughs> like, I did not leave that bar all fucking day. That's amazing. <laughs> and they're talking to the bartender and, like, other, like, people that were coming in and out of the bar. It was hilarious. But still to this day, I'm always like, you ever tried a blue balls? It's real good. You should try I, it. <laughs> I want to try that now. It sounds amazing. It's and it's so like it's such a great summer drink because it's just like so light and refreshing. Like I've gotten people who hate Blue Moon to drink that drink, and they're like, you know, it's really good. Interesting. I'm gonna have to try that. I'm gonna have to try that now because New York, New York's one of my spots that I like to hang out at a lot. I go. That's where I normally where I start. So that'll have to be somewhere I go go get one. Interesting. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. I mean, I don't know if he's still there because this tour was fuck. Uh almost 10 years. Oh god, it was almost 10 years ago. <laughs> I don't like talking in time with numbers. That makes me feel old. <laughs> yeah, it makes us I feel that. I feel that hundred percent. I'm too real bad. Like if I stand up too fast, like I will get dizzy and my joints will sound like pop rocks. Like that's just how my life is. <laughs> hey everybody. Thanks for watching the first part of Rachel's interview for beyond the neon veil. I know we digressed a little bit, did a little Vegas, did a little warp tour music. So we split it up into two episodes. So come back next week and check it out. Thank you again. Remember to follow subscribe and like to see all the great content we're making in the last American heroes. We'll see you guys next week.